This is likely one of the questions I'm asked the most as a watercolor painter, and it's curious because this particular detail isn't at all what you'd first think of when watercolor comes to mind. Which white is best to use in watercolor? Is it bleed proof white, gesso, gouache, or white watercolor? Now I'm gonna let you know by the end of this video, but the answer is a little more complicated than you might think. Now, why in the world would you want to use white in watercolor? White is creamy and not a see-through, and watercolor is sheer and lovely and all the things. So we think. Here's a few reasons why you'd want to add a white to your watercolor collection. Number one, you wanna add bold finishing touches that still feel clean and bright. Number two, you wanna add a touch of creaminess to an otherwise sheer pigment. Number three, maybe you wanna recover a muddy area of a painting. Honestly, I could go on and on, but let's get into the comparison. Starting on white paper, the Bleed Proof White, which is basically a thicker gouache. And it has nice coverage. You can clearly see it even on the white paper. Moving on to gesso. Gesso is basically acrylic, friends, so it's not going to re-wet, but it's gonna give you that incredible texture and body that is so obvious to the eye and to the touch. Gouache, also water-based like the Bleed Proof White, so it will re-wet. And it's kind of a middle of the road. It's not as easy to see on the page as the gesso, but it's still there and it's still pretty obvious to me. Last and probably least in my book is white watercolor, friends. And as you can see, it just kind of disappears, especially on white paper. Moving on to black watercolor paper. Bleed proof white, it's gorgeous. And you're probably wondering, well, what's really the difference between bleed proof white and gouache? And I'll talk about it at the gouache stage. Gesso, just as expected. And I also love this about gesso. It waters down when it's still wet. Love, love, love that. Now I applied the white gouache here a little thicker than I did the bleed proof white. So the difference you've seen between the two is a little more obvious. But if you added the bleed proof white even just a skosh heavier, it would have outperformed the white gouache. The real difference between the two, the bleed proof white isn't meant to be mixed with other colors, although you totally could. And now the white watercolor, you can see just how sheer it is, honestly. It's insanely sheer. It's even more sheer than this super thin layer of bleed proof white that I started with. And let's layer a little bit each so you can get a sense of how the opacity can build with extra layers. I gotta be honest, the semi gouache that I'm using is almost outperforming the bleed proof white in terms of what I typically expect to see from a white gouache. Maybe I've discovered something here. Check below for all the specific products that I'm using today so you can do your own comparisons. Now let's see how these all do when layered or glazed on top of watercolor. Bleed proof white is starting to pick up the watercolor underneath. And oddly enough, you can really see the powerful opacity of Bleed Proof White on this particular experiment. And the gesso. Now, of course, this is basically acrylic. It's a polymer base, so it won't re-wet. When it's wet, it could pick up a little bit of the colors underneath, but it really doesn't do that easily, which is one of the reasons I love it. Now, I'm gonna link a video below where I created a bit of controversy about using gesso, and you're gonna wanna check it out. It's a good one. All right, friends, quickly let me know, have you tried gesso with watercolor and what do you think? And while you're at it, if you like this video and it's giving you something to think about, hit the boop button, that's the like. I'd appreciate it. Moving on to the gouache over top of watercolor. And as you can see, it's easily disturbing and lifting up the color beneath it, creating a whole new color. And the white watercolor, as expected, even easier it's lifting and blending the color underneath. Let's take a look at how each does with that color lifting. So a few extra strokes on top of that bleed proof white over the color and you can see easily picked up the color. Nothing's coming off on the gesso, gorgeous, love that. I love the reliability of that with the gesso. The gouache, oh yeah, 
it picked up the color underneath big time and the white watercolor let's take a look but i think you can guess what's gonna happen now i just want to run through with my liner brush and create some dots and some linear details so you can see how each of these do their job the bleed proof white is going to give you a dimensional dot but you really have to work hard at it and make sure that your brush is loaded with the perfect amount of paint the gesso for me is the winner above all if you want a really beautiful dimensional dot easily. Dimensional dots with white gouache about the same as bleed proof white and white watercolor unless you have a lot of water on your brush. Yeah, good luck. And I'll be honest, for linear details, these all perform very similarly on black paper. But remember what happened when we used all of these on top of the watercolor. So if you don't want your color underneath disturbed and you want those crisp, bold, sparkling white details, in my opinion, gesso's the one for you. So you're probably thinking I'm claiming gesso as the winner. But here's the thing. Each of these whites has their place. Yes, yes, even the white watercolor, which I've clearly made it obvious that I'm not a fan. Let's get into it, bleed proof white. It's the best for that strong, bold whiteness that can still be re-wet. It's the closest to the gesso effect without being gesso. Gesso, it's definitely unorthodox. But if you really wanna add dimension and the strongest opacity, but don't want the color underneath to be disturbed, this is your choice. But remember, it does not re-wet no matter what you do. Most gouache is the awesome, milder, less opaque version of bleed proof white. And it's also great if you plan on doing a lot of blending with other colors. So it's kind of middle of the road in terms of intensity. Okay, I'll be honest, white watercolor to me is pretty darn useless, unless you have a very limited collection of watercolors and you want to mix in mild opacity to what pigments you do have. You may have heard me talk about convenience colors. Usually they're those soft pinks, icy tones, and obviously there's a ton of other convenience colors that have nothing to do with white. But if you want to make your own convenience colors without investing in a large amount of pigments, then white watercolor might be the way to go because it's got the lowest amount of opacity in most cases. In other words, when mixed in with traditional sheer watercolor pigments, it's going to keep those pigments looking as sheer as possible while still making you some awesome pastels. All right, friends, I have to know. Anyone else feel like I do about white watercolor? Tell me in comments. Useless or I use it a lot. I've just gotta know. So you see, we really don't have a winner here, but what we do know is that white is something I really believe in that you should have in your arsenal when it comes to watercolor. And if you're more of a purist, stick with the bleed proof white, the gouache, or the white watercolor. Otherwise, gesso is technically making you a mixed media artist. But you know me, who am I for titles? Now let's take all this a step further and create a full-blown painting, messing around with all the different opacities that watercolor and gouache and all the things have to offer us. Until next time, friends, happy painting.